10 things to know about young Canadians, and this is probably the most important thing I can share with you. It's what we call the four by five factor. A lot of trends in all of our culture, frankly, come from demographics, just the way the population works out. Um, demographics, big fancy word, just meaning the study of human populations. We're all Canadian, we love our demographics. Anybody here ever read Boom, Bust, and Echo? Yeah? Yeah, we're the only country in the world with a celebrity demographer. I love being Canadian, it's fantastic. <laughs> Um, but we love our statistics, and this is the most important one about understanding young people. It is that the 10 to 29 year old age group, for the first time ever, divides really, really neatly into four equal five year cohorts. That is to say 10 to 14, 15 to 19, 20 to 24, and 25 to 29 are all almost the same size. It's never happened before. 15 years ago, everything you heard about was Generation X. There was the Douglas Copeland book, Generation X, uh, movies like Reality Bites and Singles. Everybody was listening to that grungy, plaid, flannel, long hair, Seattle music. That's because that group, that sort of 18 to 24 year old group, was just overpopulated. There were just more of them. 10 years ago, the reason why the Britney Spears and Backstreet Boys got inflicted on the world was because there were just more tweens. Now, it's very evenly distributed, and there's not one subgroup within young Canadians that actually manages to have an undue influence because of it. Interestingly enough, while the total size of the youth population in the United States is larger as a percentage of the population, it's still very evenly distributed as well. Number two is that home offers a little bit less for young Canadians than it used to. Fully 80% of families with kids at home have only one or two children living at home. So I get asked a lot by parents and by educators, you know, my kid comes home from school and they're on MSN Messenger right away, why is that? Well, one of the reasons is they have fewer brothers and sisters at home to hang out with. As well, they have less time with their parents. 60% of women work outside the home full time now, that number's at an all time high. And I actually read an article uh, I think in, in one of the Calgary papers just last week about how families are spending on average 45 minutes less at home than they did versus 10 years ago now in a given week. So one of the kids in our community gave me this quote. He said, 3.30 to 5.30 is my chill time. It's my time for me alone at home. Like after a hard day in grade 10, he shakes himself a martini and <laughs> puts on a smoking jacket and relaxes with the paper or something. <laughs> However, they're staying at home longer. Fully 67% of unmarried 20 to 24 year olds still live at home. That number is actually 63% of unmarried girls and 70% of unmarried guys. Because <laughs> we have that sort of domestic uselessness built into us, I guess. <laughs> Anybody here have kids still living at home? Hands up if you have. Ah, get used to it, folks. They're going to be there for a while. In fact, according to Statistics Canada, fully 1% of married 30 to 35 year olds still live in the family home. So again, about 100 people in our audience, who's the, uh, who have kids, who's the lucky one out of that 100? Someone, anyone here with kids, married kids living at home? You're a fortunate, fortunate, fortunate group. Unless, of course, they move back. <laughs> but here's the really big thing happening in youth culture right now. It's that young people are getting into adulthood earlier than ever before. Sorry, young people are partially making the transition into adulthood at an earlier age than ever before. We educate our kids when they're three or four. We give them baby Einstein books and CDs. If they can't read and write by the time they're five, we're all worried all of a sudden. That's a very adult thing. Girls are actually hitting puberty at an earlier age than ever before. I'm gonna explain that in a couple of slides, but that's a very adult thing. If you smoke, I don't recommend it, but if you do, the chances are you've had your first cigarette at the age of 13. That's a very adult thing. And lastly, young people are actually losing their virginity at an earlier age than ever before. This one's a very hard one to track because some people lie and say they've had sex when they haven't. Others say they haven't had it when they have. I'm looking forward to it some, someday myself. I, uh, <laughs> I, hear, I hear good things, so that's, that's nice. Um, but these are very adult things that are happening at an earlier age, and the big trend is this one, something called precocious puberty, which is a phenomenon of early sexual development that is being noticed now in Canada, the US, Australia, and the UK. I'm gonna just read this quote. While I always believe little girls go through puberty at around 11, 12, or 13 years of age, 
something very strange was now happening to our daughters. I was now being told that little girls are considered normal if they start menstruating at the delicate age of eight. A large-scale medical study in 1997 found that 27% of African-American girls and almost 7% of Caucasian girls had the onset of secondary sexual characteristics, that's breast development or pubic hair development, at the age of seven. And by the time she's eight, one in seven Caucasian girls, uh, sorry, and one in seven Caucasian girls and one out of two African-American girls will have started puberty. Why? I've read lots of stuff about this. Some people say it's the estrogen in the products that we use. Others are saying it's the amount of fat in our diet. The general consensus tends to be the amount of hormones in our food is probably the number one cause. And while this seems to be quite gender specific, let me promise you, nothing makes a little boy grow up quickly like a little girl growing up quickly. <laughs> it's a very adult thing. It's hard to feel like you're a kid when your mom has had that awkward conversation with you about how your body is changing. These are very adult things happening at an earlier age than ever before. That being said, that full transition into adulthood happens at a later age than ever before. 20 years ago, we graduated from post-secondary school on uh, the median age was 22, it's now 23. The average age was 24, it's now 26. But here are the two big ones. 20 years ago, we got married in this country for the first time at 25. That's now 29. We had our first kids at 26. That age is now 29. All of which equals what I would call a prolonged pre-adult life stage. Some adult roles and responsibilities at an earlier age than ever before, but the full transition into adulthood happens at a later age than ever before. And this is the single biggest trend to hit Western youth ever. We actually kind of forget that adolescence is a fairly recent concept. The word teenager didn't enter into the popular lexicon until the 1940s. And it used to very much be that you went from childhood to adulthood quite quickly. Well, we've created this notion of adolescence, and over the past 50 or 60 years, we've stretched it out. I can't argue that a 16-year-old and a 25-year-old are the same person. They're not. But let me put it to you this way. If I describe to you someone who lives at home, goes to school, but they're working part-time. They kind of know what they want to do with their life, but they're not totally sure. They have a cell phone and they text with it. They spend a lot of time online. They play video games. They go to the movies. Their friends are really important. They drink beer. Maybe they're having sex, and they might smoke a little bit of dope on the weekends. Is that person 16, or is that person 26? Someone at the back is like, it's me. Yeah, it's <laughs> we are hanging out this weekend. 